Katie, incredible pictures coming in. What are you seeing there today? Well, Graham, I was here last night just before 11 o'clock central time when this collapse first started happening and this bridge started taking on water. We're about 15 hours removed from that and it looks so much worse. Let's see if we can get some drone video up for you that we shot just a few hours ago. You can see the scope of the collapse from our drone. The section of the train bridge on the North Sioux City, South Dakota side has collapsed and shifted, also taking the Iowa side down with it. Now, this is a bridge on the BNSF rail line that connects South Dakota and Iowa. It's a major transportation line for this region. Now, if we can take a closer look at what we're seeing on the ground here, you can really see how fast and how harshly the floodwaters are running through the Big Sioux River. This river cresting around 3.30 this morning at 44.98 feet. Now that crest came several hours sooner than expected and also came in several feet higher than officials predicted. The amount of rain this region has seen in the last few weeks really wrecking havoc here today. Now losing this rail passage between South Dakota and Iowa, really a devastating blow to this region. And state officials saying today it will likely be months before this line is open again. We reached out to BNSF and their director of external communications told us, quote, we have been monitoring the region for our increased track inspections and have not been operating over this bridge at North Sioux City as a precaution given the conditions. All trains are being rerouted via Creston, Iowa. We will continue to monitor and inspect conditions in the area and execute recovery operations as needed. Now, South Dakota Governor Christy Nome was back in North Sioux City today as this area has re received extensive flooding over the last couple of hours. Earlier this week, the governor declared a disaster declaration for 21 counties in South Dakota. But in her address this morning, she said here is the most critical situation. And remember, there's other communities that are suffering as well. We have Mitchell and Yankton and all those along the river that are dealing with flooded basements and houses that are gone and damaged property. But right here is certainly one of the areas that we're seeing that is is the crisis situation that needs to be dealt with today. The governor speaking to those residents impacted by these floodwaters this morning, especially those in the nearby McCook Lake area, some of them who have lost their homes entirely that have collapsed with the running water. She says she and the state are standing with them through this difficult time. And I know a lot of families have lost their personal property. They've had damage to their homes. It's going to impact them for weeks and months and yet to come. Uh, and, and we're just deeply grieved by what we see as far as damage and what they'll have to deal with. But we'll be walking alongside them and be offering all the resources that we possibly can to help them get back to normal as soon as possible, as soon as we see these high waters recede and move out of the area. Now, yesterday afternoon, or yesterday evening, actually, about 6 p.m. Central Time, Interstate 29, a major thoroughfare here between South Dakota and Iowa, was closed down just up the road from North Sioux City. So crews could build a levee to stop all of this water from the Big Sioux River from hitting the North Sioux City area. Now, a bit of good news from the governor's press conference this morning, that interstate should, uh, could likely reopen later today or tomorrow. So a little bit of a glimmer of light here in North Sioux City, South Dakota. But with uh, Chief Photographer Acacia Phillips, I'm Katie Koppel. Graham, I'm gonna send it back to you.